own some pine specials. This edition features the second line reggae music of Cyril Neville and the Uptown All-Stars, which combines the Caribbean rhythms of Jamaica with the pulsating beat of New Orleans funk to produce an exciting new musical experience on the Lonesome Pine Specials. What you're about to experience is what we call Uptown Second Line Reggae.
Sound Rigging. Thank you very much.
Well, that town all star concept came from a brother by the name of Gerald Professor Shorthair Tillman. And uh, the first Uptown All-Stars group consisted of Gerald Tillman on keyboards and vocals, Ivan Neville on keyboards, uh, Willie Green on drums, Nick Daniels on bass, and Renard Porsche on guitar. And they played uh, what we call Uptown New Orleans funk. And unfortunately, Tillman died in 1986 and we kept the spirit of what he created alive by keeping the name but just changing the music a little bit and we invented what we call second line reggae from what Tillman and them started doing and then what we picked up from listening to people like Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and in educating ourselves about reggae music, we found out that the reggae musicians, in listening to what came from the United States, mainly from Florida and New Orleans, they created what we call, what is reggae music. So it's come a 360 degree circle now, and we, take, we, we took those rhythms and incorporated them with the second line rhythms that we grew up with, and came up with second line of the game.
because that I think ever lived. She just so happens to be a black American and a female. Her name is Rosa Parks. She was the lady who was the spark and the cause of this type of audience being able to be together right here today. We dedicate this to Sister Rosa Parks and the womanhood to women everywhere. That started our freedom movement. Thank you, Sister Rosa Parks. Thank you, Sister Rosa. Thank you. Put up a marriage together again now 
musicians organized is because there were great New Orleans musicians that were dying, literally dying, and, and not getting any recognition for the contribution they made to American music, namely James Carroll Booker III, the Piano Prince of New Orleans, Professor Longhair, and most recently Gerald Tillman, Professor Shorthair. And what we are dedicated to is to preserving our musical heritage and at the same time teaching the next generation of musicians how to be in this business and not just uh, somebody else reaping all of the benefits and they you know doing all of the, the work and we 
put those things into our music. You, there's a, a one song we have in the show called More Professor Longhair. And what it's talking about is the fact that we don't intend to forget what he contributed and we don't intend to let the next generation not know about him. And in turn, what we do is we entertain and educate at the same time. And that's basically what the whole gist of this thing is, is to not only entertain people, but to educate them about us as a people, as well as as musicians. And this is the, one of the main reasons we started this is because in New Orleans, the New Orleans musician gets no recognition he gets barely any compensation for what he does in his own hometown. So what we want to do is kind of take this to the world in song that we are aware of what's going on and we intend to do something about it.
Thank you. What we are up against in New Orleans is, at this point, our culture, our contribution, when I say our, I mean the African contribution to the culture of New Orleans is being whitewashed in the sense that everything culturally, musically, the food and everything is being touted as Cajun to take away nothing from the Cajun people. A lot of things that are being labeled Cajun are actually African. Speaking of food and music, the, all, most of the rhythms that come out of New Orleans are African rhythms. The whole music structure for jazz and everything were based on these African rhythms. And this is what's being left out of you know, what people are being, uh, are hearing about New Orleans, you hear nothing of the African contribution to the art and the culinary th thing in New Orleans. I mean, uh, pepper and okra and stuff like that came from Africa. Gumbo is an African word, you know, and I must add that uh, those, most of the dishes that, you know, are famous in New Orleans are Creole, I'm not saying that there aren't some famous Cajun dishes, but a lot of the ones that are being labeled Cajun now are actually Creole dishes. And the difference between Cajun and Creole is the Cajuns were French people that came from Europe, and the Creoles were a mixture of African and whatever else that got thrown in a gumbo, if you will. And this is something also that we are kind of dedicated to, uh, you know, bringing some light to this, that this is definitely something that we are not going to stand for, that, you know, this has been going on for almost 5,000 years now, that our history has been distorted, and, you know, so this is one group of individuals that intend to shed as much light on the situation as we possibly can. Clap your hands. on this one. Yes. Freedom. Only freedom will stop the fire this time. Can stop the fire this time. They always for 400 
Where you are, you gotta feel good music in your soul. 
song in tribute to our mother, Mother Africa. The meters gave us this. Thank you. 